Hello and welcome to the second video of Grow Affiliate and our first ever interview. It is a great honor and privilege to introduce Tiffany Domina. Uh, Tiffany, it is great to have you. Just for people who don't know who you are, can you just share a little bit about who you are, what you do? So my name is Tiffany Domina and I started HowToEntrepreneur.com in 2018. And from there, it was mostly an affiliate marketing website that I was writing about entrepreneurship and various things, partnering with affiliates who would also be able to help entrepreneurs. And from there it grew. So I'm really passionate about affiliate marketing and I'm excited to talk more about it in this interview. Yeah, that's really cool. Cause I, I know that you, we've known each other for a while, haven't we? We met inside right. the wealthy affiliate members area. And like you, you, you were saying earlier, it was like two, I thought it was like maybe a year ago, but you were saying it's like two or three years ago. Well, I know I joined in 2018 and it seems mm -hmm. like we get soon after I joined. So I, I think maybe it has been around that time. Yeah. And cause I remember we, we sent a few messages to each other and we kind of became like, how do you say accountability partners or how do you want to say yeah. that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, to some extent. Yeah. <laughs> We all, need to kick, we all need to kick up the butt sometimes, so it's good to have that accountability, right? Yeah. So, but, um, right. so I, I know that you, obviously I know that you've got like a military background, but like, can you just tell people, how did you go from like being in the US military to getting involved in affiliate marketing? What, how, what drew you to affiliate marketing and how did you start? Right. So um, I was... I was in the military for nine years and I separated in 2015 and that was kind of a choice to put my family first and to pursue my dream. Um, I felt like when I was in the military, um, you know, I could get deployment orders or orders to move at any point and it would uproot my family and what they, what they knew. And I kind of had conflicts about what I felt like I should be doing as a mom. And after my first deployment where my son was four, he was like three, turning four. And um, it was just difficult to see him like crying and stuff when I had to leave to go mm -hmm. to Iraq. And from there, I, kind of, I was more serious about separating the military. So it wasn't until maybe, it was two years after I separated that I really start to get into affiliate marketing. Prior to that, I really didn't know it could be a good income source um, because I had been using Amazon affiliate program and put in affiliate links on my blog at the time. Okay. And it was a Christian lifestyle blog at the time. Um, but I wasn't making really anything from that like change. And part of it was because I was mostly put in affiliate links to like books yeah and you know people buy them used and you don't make anything from that um but i didn't know what i was doing wrong mm. and it got to the point where when i was about to have my second child that i was like um i was mostly working in my husband's general contracting business and i was a high-risk pregnancy and um, so you have to be like on bed rest and things like that. And I felt like I can't be lugging paint and wood and all of these things for like construction type of jobs. No. Um, and I also felt like I couldn't be doing as much like um, outbound sales stuff, like um, knocking on doors or going to events and stuff. So I felt like I needed to rethink how I make money. <laughs> And um, that's when I decided to get really serious about my blog and affiliate marketing seemed like a way to make money from the blog that's not like public facing. It's not like I had to deal directly with customers, do customer support and all that stuff. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't really want to do that because I knew I would be having a newborn anytime. And I, I just felt like it's the wrong time for me to um start something that was more like customer facing yeah so yeah it worked out yeah well um i i think just like having to like um deal with the customers directly like you know 
their concerns, if they have a concern with your product or service, they're going to be um, asking you, like, for example, if I sell um, SEO services, then people are going to be asking, how are my rankings doing? Mm -hmm. How is this going? And, you know, and um, they might want to see results within a certain time frame, or they might want responses within a certain time frame. And when you have like a newborn, then um, at the time, I just wanted to be able to focus mostly on that and be able to still make money. So with affiliate marketing, you're making your sales, but you don't have as much follow-up, you know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're just making a sale. You don't have to, usually you don't have to do all the follow-up that comes with affiliate, uh, like normal entrepreneurship. Exactly. Yeah. All the customer care, the shipping, the complaints. Yeah. I did the complaints, yeah. the whole customer Refund, service. Refund, billing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, 10 years I worked in call centers dealing with complaints. So, yeah, it's not, <laughs> not fun. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it, what I hear you saying is basically your main motivation in getting started with affiliate marketing was your family, really, and kind of lifestyles, yeah. quality time. Yeah, I really wanted to be able to, like, do things – differently as a mom and mm. I had different employment before that I felt like I had to sacrifice some of the things I felt convicted to do okay. and um, I wanted to make sure that didn't happen mm -hmm. so with affiliate marketing I felt like I didn't have to compromise what I wanted to be as a mom as much yeah got more control over your life basically like yeah, I felt like you can it. Choose. The only the the con though, well, let's. I'll finish uh, answering the questions you have. I'm not gonna go off on a tangent. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, like um, because for me it was I started for a little, little bit different reasons. It was like I needed to. Be, I wanted to be in Thailand, Southeast Asia, but I had to keep mm -hmm. going back to the UK, working, coming back and forth. Back and money was always an issue. Right. So I, for me, I wanted something I could do anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I haven't worked on the beach yet, but I could if I wanted, you know. It's like, it's just that freedom. Yeah. That, <laughs> it's just that, that freedom that comes with, it doesn't matter what country I'm in. I mean, you know what I mean? My, my income doesn't change. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot. Of, we should talk about the pros and cons. Of right. So, so like for you, like from your experience, because yeah. so you've been doing affiliate marketing what did you say like so you had I didn't actually realize you had a blog to begin with so so that so then how did you go yeah. from having a blog to then start like making money with the blog like like you said you're making a little bit from Amazon but how like how did it become what did you do to make it like go from a side hobby to where it's like a real income okay so um into 2015 I was publishing books um okay. and so 2014-2015 I was publishing books like a mad woman mm -hmm. I had published like maybe 15 and I was writing all the time so that was kind of how it started I was publishing these books I really had a message that I wanted to communicate but um I was active duty in the military and I was in I was going to university, wow. so I was pretty busy. I, I was um, also had a young son, and I was married, so I was really busy. And when I was doing research, <laughs> when I was doing research about how to get book sales, then a lot of the 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 a lot of the things teach you to do book tours and to um, go and do book signings and stuff like that. And I just didn't have the time for that. Yeah. It's like, how am I going to schedule these book tours? And I, I just have too much going on right now. So I started looking for ways that I could market that weren't um, like book tours. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started the blog. Um, I realized that content marketing is a good way to market the books. So mm -hmm. I started the blog and my main focus originally was to sell the books. Okay. But then I learned about affiliate marketing and the Amazon Associates program. So I thought, okay, let's try it, you know. 
And I tried that, but selling other people's books wasn't really making me money. So mm. then uh, I was writing mostly at the time I was writing like, um, like devotional things because mm-hmm. it was a Christian blog and I was in school for um, doing my seminary. Okay. So I was writing mostly like Bible study type of things, but um, I didn't know search engine optimization. Um, I didn't know like, I didn't know search engine optimization and I didn't know affiliate marketing that well. So it wasn't like the blog wasn't making the money. I was paying for ads to go to my books. So I, at times I was having good results with the books, but um, I wanted, and also I was doing social media marketing. And so I was seeing like spikes when I'm very active in social, then I was seeing spikes. If I stopped being active, it's, it wasn't like what I heard about SEO where you know, you write an article and it can rank for years. Social media wasn't like that. (laughs) So I was looking for how can I uh, attract customers with, like, how can I make better use of my time, basically? Because I don't want it to be where I have to post, like, five times a day on Facebook, Mm -hmm. then get in the groups and spend all this time inside the groups. Like, I wanted to find a way where I could create a piece of content and possibly get a return for my time for a longer period of time. Yeah, absolutely. So that's where blogging came in. And then uh, because I wasn't getting results as fast as I wanted to, and at the time I had separated the military, my husband was um, working his business, and I didn't really have a lot to show for mine. So I started working more and more in his business to the point where I wasn't really blogging at all. And then... um, it got to a point where I was like, I really miss writing and um, I really miss what I was doing with my business. The people that were buying my books and gave me reviews and that told me they were really impacted by what I was doing. Like I missed all that. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that I needed to learn how to do it the right way. So that it's something that I have, I have something to show for it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I can actually support myself or contribute to my family and all that. So, um, yeah, the trigger that caused me to go back to blogging was when I got pregnant and when I realized that th- I'm not going to be able to do as much in the general contracting business. Mm this now because you know I have to be most but I still want it to be helpful you know um contributing to my family and stuff so that's when I I got back to um blogging but at that time my husband and I had talked about not just trying to troubleshoot things on my own by watching like YouTube videos and reading blogs and stuff but find an authoritative source where I can get the support that I need, where I can get the tools that I need, where I can network with people who are like-minded, like find that community. Yeah. And that's when I um, started doing more research and I want the affiliate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also had signed up for a couple other courses because I was like, this time I'm serious. I'm doing whatever <laughs> it takes. <laughs> I'm going to trust my gut. I spent a long time not trusting my gut. Like when I would see courses or see um, people I felt like I could trust, Mm -hmm. I had bought from so many people like that before and then been just like, just they weren't good. So then it got to the point where I stopped trusting my gut so much because it's like, well, I trusted my gut before. And this person ended up kind of being a ripoff. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's easy to lose confidence because there's so many scammers out there, right? Just ready to take advantage. And it's very easy to yeah. kind of lose but it's confidence. Crazy. It's crazy the impact. It's crazy the impact it can have because, like, you do. You start not trusting yourself because of what they've done. And it's really not 
it's not your fault. It was wrong what they're doing. Exactly. Um, doing nothing wrong. I remember their profession yeah. what they do. This is what they do. They're experts at emotional manipulation. At saying bad words. People. Yeah, scaring people. And yeah, they put their experts at it. So yeah. I, I always tell people that I've been scammed before. Don't, don't ever feel bad for being scammed because most of us at some point have. And it's not our fault. <laughs> right. Like we both deal with a lot of people, like talk with a lot of people who are just starting out and we're helping them get started. What what I see a lot is people who it's like I, I did the same too. Like you watch a YouTube video here, you might read an ebook here about affiliate marketing, and then you might learn about Pinterest in another course here. But it's all kind of I call it a mishmash mosh of like different strategies, different theories, and it's like a ends up like a Frankenstein monster type thing. <laughs> Where you're getting all this, and you just, I tell people, you, it doesn't, it can be wealthy affiliate, it can be any other program, it doesn't matter what program it is, just follow a step-by-step -step course from beginning to end so that it's just systematic, you know, in, in, in going through, instead of jumping from one thing to another, just commit to one course, or, or more like you did, but, and just start from the beginning and just go through, you know what I mean? So I, I agree with you on that. But I, I've got to say, that is just like, you are a phenomenal. It sounds like when you decide to do something, you don't do it half-hearted. Like, you go all in. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about all the people who have said, oh, you know, or maybe somebody who's watching this, I don't really have time to start an online business. Like, what would you say to them? I mean, military, child, well, like, how many, like, writing, just, what would you say to people who say they don't have time to start an online business? Well, I think that, um, I think that time is saying you don't have enough time. I think yeah. a lot of people undervalue small fragments of time. You know, like mm -hmm. when you have 10 minutes, you think, oh, I only have 10 minutes, so might as well just sit here and just wait on the next thing. You know, um, so then you end up wasting that time. For example, when I was in the military, and let's say there's a meeting coming up, and mm -hmm. I have 15 minutes before the meeting, I'm early, I didn't just sit there and wait on the meeting to start. Mm -hmm. You know, I would be trying to do something that's beneficial to my business in those little fragments of time, yeah. because it adds up. And it's just like, um, you know, like saving is the same concept. Even if you don't have a lot of money left over at the end of the month, if you can just save $5 here, $10 there, yeah. $20 there, you know, it adds up over time. And then when you get a flat tire or something like that, and you have that <laughs> fragment of mm -hmm. money, it can, it can help you. Definitely. So that's how it was in the beginning for me when it came to working on my business. I didn't have like, an hour fragment a lot of people are looking for when they have an hour an eight hour like full day to put into the business yeah. and it may not go like that for me i knew that probably wouldn't come anytime soon mm -hmm. so i started saying well how can i cut back on things that i'm doing that don't matter that much like how can i spend less time doing my dishes so that mm. maybe I can have a couple extra minutes to work on my business or um, how can I like be more efficient when I'm doing my hair or something like that. Wow. Um, because if I can be more efficient in those little day to day things, then I can possibly pull out an hour somewhere mm -hmm. or, you know, just by way of having little chunks added together. So that, that was how I decided to go about it because I knew for sure that I wasn't just wasting time, in my opinion, and I, I wasn't just like um, having an hour or several hours mm -hmm. at that time to, to devote. So I just had to reshape things. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing to me. Like you're so organized, like even down to the, you know, per minute, you're not counting the hours, you're counting the minutes. Like, that is impressive. <laughs> Not everyone can do that. Honestly. I don't know if I would consider myself... <laughs> I don't know if I would consider myself organized. I don't, I don't think I would consider myself organized, but wow. I have come a long way. 
You definitely are. <laughs> Compared to me anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just take it. Take the compliment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, I think uh, when, another thing that was helpful for me was um, just to write down my schedule how it was mm -hmm. and then to like to just live that schedule out for a couple of weeks and kind of see my pattern of how I'm spending my time yeah. and then from there to challenge how I'm spending my time so like mm -hmm. like for example maybe I have you know I go to work at this time um, I get a break at this time I have lunch I have uh, you know I get off work at this time go pick up the my son from daycare and on and on. So I, I wrote mm -hmm. down what I actually was doing with my time. Yeah. And I didn't try to change anything at the beginning. I was just trying to see how is my time actually being spent Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. And from there, I got to see that, well, I'm spending about an hour on this, an hour on that, 30 minutes on this, you know. And then yeah. uh, I started challenging how much time I was spending on things and trying to see if there's a way I can spend less time on this in a yeah. way that I can spend less time on that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, it, it just yeah. goes to show that when you, like, what's the word? You know, when you take, take a step back and kind of evaluate, I mean, it's just like going to, you know, if you want to go to the gym or something. Yeah, I think in a way it's a little bit about, like, priorities. Like, if you decide you want to, you know, lose weight or whatever, and you, you're going to go to the gym, then you make oh, time. Oh, yeah. You can, yeah, you can make time, right? It's, it's, it's about priorities. But, but when you take a step back and kind of, like look at the actual because because I I don't know how much time I waste you know most people don't know how much time they waste I don't know scrolling Facebook or watching Netflix or whatever it is you know but if we actually wrote it down I think mm -hmm. most of us myself included would be quite surprised at how much time we actually waste yeah <clears throat> sure. yeah I mean just like like money and time have so many things in common like when you start budgeting then you realize man I spent a lot on McDonald's or I spent a lot. <laughs> On. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you just keep swiping your card and never really pay attention to your bank statements or mm -hmm. trying to discipline yourself on how you spend then you won't even realize how much you are spending and what other options you have to do with it that might put you in a better financial position give you a True. better financial future definitely um i do i see the same the same thing when it comes to people that are new in affiliate marketing trying to get started out mm -hmm. and they're like hosting is so expensive it's like have you ever tried to start a brick and mortar <laughs> like even if you try to start a lawn care company you got to buy a lawnmower you know that's a good point <laughs> very good point <laughs> The lawnmower is likely to be more than hosting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because I, like I struggle to think of any other business that you can actually start for as little, uh, you know, as, as an affiliate, as a website business. Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Over time, uh, it gets to the point where, you know, of course your expenses grow as you realize more things that you want, more preferences that you have. Maybe you want a special keyword tool or you want mm. um, special graphic tool. Um, and your know, expenses can grow, but you don't have to start like that. You really can start at a very inexpensive amount. Definitely. I mean, like a, a wealthy affiliate, what we pay, like, what is it? 40, 47, $49, if I get that right. $49 a month plus what? $13 a year for a domain. <laughs> like and in, the, in, in the first year that's all I pay I didn't pay anything else and I paid yearly so it was less than that probably about $23 a month for the, so yeah like that that is amazing like for you know a business that's generating four figures a month is fun you know amazing nothing right. else like it and I always tell people like I've met people too who were like hesitating about oh I don't know whether and it's like well, first of all, do you want to start a business? And if, if you definitely do, this is the best way to start a business, right? It's the best type of business to start. Well, you, I mean, depending on your skills, you know, and depending mm -hmm. on what you want to do. Yeah. But I think that um, it's definitely inexpensive. That's something that I can't argue. <laughs> definitely. It's true.
Um, another thing I wanted to ask you was, because as I say, we're both met, we're probably both mentored, probably if not dozens, if not hundreds of people, like to start their own mm. affiliate marketing businesses. And like, this is just out of my own interest, because some people just saw, some people, you know, that they just take off. And, you know, you, you see their success stories inside Wealthy Affiliate about how they've made the first commission, you know, within the first month or two. And then they just, all the success stories coming out. And then you see other people who are like, they, they just kind of, they're, they're a fully paid up member, but you never hear anything from them or, you know, or, or they, it seems like years down the line, they've not really gotten anywhere. Like, and I don't, I'm trying to put my finger on, like, what is the difference between those two types of people? Because if, I, if, yeah. if if we could figure that out, <laughs> we would be millionaires, I think. But but I mean, but I mean, like, <laughs> what, but, but what are the, some of the common traits? Would you say that that differentiate like super successful affiliates versus people who are like just dabbling in affiliate marketing for years and not getting anywhere? Yeah, I think that um, one of them is mindset. So mm. I know when I started out. I didn't start out thinking it's an experiment. I didn't start out thinking this is something I'm gonna try. True. Um, I started out thinking, believing that it will work. Mm -hmm. um, I ha of course you have some, some like skepticism deep down, but I, I, I started out with the idea that I was gonna commit to it and give it as much as I could yeah. and see how it goes. And sure. it's, it's difficult to take that risk. I'm not gonna lie. Um, because your time is valuable and you don't want uh, to invest it in something that is just a complete waste of maybe a year or two years of time. Of course not, no. And sometimes it can look like that. Mm. But I think that at some point you have to put it in your mind that I am i don't want to regret not giving it my all. And mm. if this is something that I really feel like it's of interest to me and it's going to change my life. Like, what am I going to do about that? You know? Yeah. And so for me, that's kind of, that's where I was. I was like, I felt like I didn't have a lot of options because I was on bed rest. <laughs> you know, um, I was about to have a baby. I knew that trying to get a new job was probably not a good option. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I didn't really feel like I had a lot of options. So I felt like, I need to go into this, like something has to work for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I, I just went all in, that's one thing. And another thing is um, prioritization. A lot of people might have, maybe they have an income somewhere, like they have a business or they have um, a job and they're not that miserable with it. Like. Mm -hmm they are making decent income, they get days off and stuff like that. So they're kind of like complacent to some extent. Sure. And it's really difficult for them. Like they can make the payments. The payments don't really hurt them. But to take the time, they don't really want to invest the time that mm -hmm. it takes. Um, so I've seen, like, like you mentioned, some people who they pay, but you never see them. I think because they're comfortable already and it would, it would take them to get to the point where they're discom they have discomfort with their current situation. And then um, that drives them to do something different. Mm -hmm. And then there was a third category, I think, and it's just people who um, maybe they don't have focus um, and what well, I, I guess it's more categories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some people don't have focus so True. they they're uh they paying for affiliate marketing then they're paying for shopify and they're paying for um real estate courses and they're um also paying for all of these different things in hopes that one of them will work but they're not investing enough time in any of them mm -hmm. to actually make any of them work yeah you know True. So I've seen yeah. that and it, some people will do that for years like they'll do that for years with having their time like all distributed everywhere and none of them actually yielding much in return yeah, I see that yeah, I've seen that. But that's what I was saying about yeah. just, whatever course it is just focus on one you know what I mean at a time yeah it's crazy but yeah. I, 
yeah but I, I told it mindset is a big one like that is huge I, I think yeah I, I think I was the same as you like my mindset going into it was I was very skeptical and I did I didn't believe it was it's not that I didn't believe it was gonna work but I didn't believe it worked until I got my first like I made my first commission after two weeks which is quite early that's earlier than average but it, yeah then, it is so before that I was like I'm gonna give it my all but I'm not I don't I don't know if this is gonna work but as soon as I got that first commission I was like okay I am like this is it now that like, proof of concept right it's like yeah. I'm that's it now yeah this, this works I'm just gonna keep going and I, I want to say that just because I went all in and you're saying you went all in yeah like doesn't mean we did have doubts like we definitely had doubts yes but the the courage seemed to outweigh that like it was True. like um <laughs> it was i was willing to take the risk like i don't know how I, it's not everything that i i do like that but like i said some of it was feeling in a pinch for me True. and feeling Absolutely. like well um, yeah, some of it was filling in a pinch, and some of it was because I, I really believed that other people were doing well with it, Yeah, and that if they could, I could too. Exactly, why not? Yeah. But some people don't feel like that. When they see, um, like even if they see me and they believe that I have good character, I'm genuine, I'm honest, and they believe that I'm making money with affiliate marketing, even if they believe those things, it might still be hard for them to believe that they can do the same thing. Like their mm. esteem is like not high enough to believe that they can do it too. Yeah. Absolutely. And that mindset issue is, is, is sad. It is. And, and how can people break out of that? You know, it's quite a I deep issue. Isn't it? it is. I think it's this, it, like people, experience it in any new walk of life like i've seen people who are really overweight and then they decide that they want to lose weight and then they keep thinking will i ever be able to do it mm. you know or if you get in a lot of debt then it's like i have all of this debt will i ever be able to get out like i see other people becoming debt free but will i ever be able to get out i think it's the same way when you are making a career transition, but even more so because affiliate marketing is a really uncommon career. You know, it's, it's not like nursing or engineering where people have this level of prestige about it. And sure. you know that regardless what country you go to, you're probably going to be able to find an engineering or nursing job. With affiliate marketing, it's not, the path isn't that laid out where, you know, even when you compare affiliate marketing and sales, um, most people know that you can do really well or really bad in sales. Mm. Um, you know, you see people like real estate agents and it's like, you can do really well as a real estate agent, but you have to be like, you have to do certain things, dot, dot, dot. With affiliate marketing, it's really a sales job, but it's, it's not um, outbound. It's inbound where, you know, you're, getting content to rank, you're doing content marketing, you're attracting people and you're selling somebody else's products. It's very similar, but yeah. um, it's the path isn't quite as laid out as um, re being a real estate agent or something like that. So it's, it's true. Yeah. There is a, a, I don't hear a many feeling people of more risk, school. you know? True. I don't hear many people leaving school saying, I want to be an affiliate marketer, you know? I never, pl I never thought I'd be an affiliate marketer. I don't know about you when I left school. What? I think it's new. I think it, because the internet, like wh if you go back, you know, to the history of the internet, the internet has only been public for since the 90s. Yeah. So it's like Google just started in 2000, 2002, I think, or 2005, somewhere in there. Uh -huh. So this all is fairly new. So a career felt like <clears throat> affiliate marketing. I don't know when they even invented the tracking software for affiliate marketing, but it's probably somewhere in the 2000s. It's a new career. Yes, true. Um, in the beginning, when you look at like nursing and when they talk about women becoming nurses and stuff, it was a lot of controversy about that too. 
but it, it took time before that was considered like a prestigious position and a prestigious position for a woman to be in, you know? Yeah. So I just think it it's just going to take time for people to realize that this is a viable career path and mm -hmm. um, the expectations from it. I think it's very different because it's an incremental income stream. It's commission based, similar to sales, mm -hmm. um, but you don't have the same <coughs> supervision me. as you would with it. Not like you have to show up the car dealership at this time and they're going to tell you you have to make this many calls mm -hmm. before you can go home. It's not going to be like that. No. And uh, the same way with like, even if you do door to door, they're going to tell you you have to knock on this many doors, hand out this many flyers. Like, um, they're going to tell you that stuff and then you still are getting a commission. <laughs> but in our case, it's self-paced. You do as much as you want. If you don't make a sale, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't make a sale, you don't, you don't get your money. Like, no, you and nobody's going to really follow up and say, hey, you, you should have been doing this many blog posts unless you get a coach or something. Mm, that you know? is so true. Like that's one of the things that people that I didn't realize about affiliate marketing was like, it's a big difference, isn't it, between working for yourself and then having a boss over your shoulder telling you. So like this video is about the truth about affiliate marketing, right? So I, I really, I said to you before we started this, I, I don't just want to talk about the glossy bits. There's amazing, great, things about affiliate mm -hmm. marketing, but there are downsides too, you know, li like learning self-discipline, which is amazing that you can work whenever you want, but the downside is you have to be organized, otherwise, you know, you're not going to eat. Um, so can you just run us through like what you think some, <laughs> <laughs> what, what you think some of the pros and cons of affiliate marketing are versus like working a more conventional job? I think the pro is definitely the, that you can make your own schedule, that you can uh, work from any location, that you really have a lot of income potential because mm -hmm. there's lots of different affiliate programs with different terms and things like that. You can pretty much be in any niche and have be in an affiliate program. And it can be a side hustle. It can be a full-time. It can be um, an income that you make on the side and have your own products and services, it can fit into your life in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be like your full-time job. Um, so I think it's just so flexible. That's what I really like about it. I, um, yeah. I think there's also people who pay well. Um, some people don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that going into the cons, I would say some of the cons are that is still a new career field. And for a lot of businesses, they understand their salespeople, but they don't understand that affiliates are really their salespeople too. So they don't have the same, like, um, they don't uh, connect them as much to the business as they do like their salespeople or their HR or other parts of their company. Uh -huh. They don't communicate as well most of the time, like, you might uh, just hear about them doing a promotion just by way of checking your affiliate dashboard and seeing that you made a sale. Then you realize, wow, they had this big Christmas promotion. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, some affiliates, yes, yeah, some companies don't communicate. So you could be doing more social media marketing for them, or you could be doing more uh, mailing an email list or something like that but they don't communicate. So you don't realize that they're doing anything. True. Um, Model of the story. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Sometimes they might change the pricing of their products and services and you might be making really good commissions one month and then it just falls off. They went from selling the program for $900 to selling the program for 10. And mm. then it's like, <laughs> it becomes no longer a good stream of income. So it's almost like they don't have the same respect or um, like they don't have the same level of communication with affiliates as I think they should. Um, mm. Some yeah. affiliate programs, yeah. Not yeah, some, some affiliate programs. And some great ones, right? But yeah, because I, I told you. Yeah, there's some very good ones. 
like I told you before, I had a really bad experience with my, one of my first affiliate, I basically built my first website around this affiliate program. And like you said, they had all these live events and stuff that I would only find out afterwards. And I could have promoted that. I had thousands of people on my email list I could have promoted it to. Um, and they just never paid. I had to chase them. I think you did too, do I? I had to chase them for payment. Like, and they still owe me like six months worth of payments and I just stopped chasing them. It's just not worth it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's def horrible. Definitely make but sure you pick the right one. Uh, yeah. On the other side, it's very good ones that communicate all the time. They let you know about promotions they're having. They're constantly thinking about how they can get more sales online. They're more knowledgeable about digital marketing and how affiliate marketers fit into the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, it's definitely a difference. But I've even had some affiliate partners who are so, like, not knowledgeable about how powerful affiliate marketing can be that they ask me, can I make sales calls? <laughs> wow. Like, Do you think my time is better spent <laughs> making sales calls or is my time better spent, like, making doing what i do with content marketing really yeah. i could be getting yourselves that they, they actually asked <laughs> you to make call they actually asked you to do that yes oh my goodness yeah that they is... pay their their they pay their outbound cold callers higher than they do their affiliates so they were they were paying like 30 dollars per sale for affiliates but 300 dollars per sale for a cold caller wow. like i think that is Crazy. Kind of off. Yes. Because at this point, like the internet is shaping the buying decision so much that the cold caller, yes, I can make I can make cold calls and make sales, right? But mm -hmm. it's not gonna be giving you incremental results over years, you know? True. Um I ha like with content marketing, you have one post, it might not be doing well this month if you write it like right now, but maybe six months down the line, that post can be bringing you sales and it's not going to be outbound and inbound marketing is or outbound and inbound sales is different. You know, with outbound sales is faster up front, right? It seems more immediate. Um, you go, you knock on the door. Yeah. You, you go, you knock on the door, you go and you hand out a flyer. You um, go and hand out a business card. You talk to people and say, hey, you're interested in my product or service. And uh, inbound marketing is not like that because you got to do all the work up front and then the results is later down the line. It doesn't take away from the impact, though, and how. Um, it's the same result at the end of the day. Or even more. Like, a lot of companies are really noticing that Digital marketing is what it is, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's like an old school type of thinking, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. Old school. And I get it. Like, I get it because when I was starting out, I told you when I was starting out on my website, we were doing mostly outbound sales stuff for my husband's business. And when, um, when we were doing that, it was – getting us results same day so if i go and i knock on the door and tell them that we can fix their fence or we can cut mm -hmm. their grass like some people are going to be interested in that and hire us on the spot yeah if i wrote an article about lawn care <laughs> in san antonio um then that article might take a while to get the same results that's the problem it's, um, the, it's the delayed gratification Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That, that takes a while to get you. Even for me, that took a while to get my head around. The work I put in now, I might not get the results until three months down the line or something. Yes. It's the same way with, um, like, even if you put up ads or something like that, like, uh -huh. you pay them, you set up the campaign, you put up the ads, you spend all that money on your design, your copy, all that, and then it may or may not um, yield you the results True. right now. You got to optimize them and everything. Yeah. 
for me, the biggest, one of the things I most enjoy about affiliate marketing is that I can change direction whenever I want. I, I can start a new website, I can go into a new niche, I can um, give myself a project if I want to write today or if I want to, you know, I, I can choose the direction of my own business and I really enjoy that control, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but I, for me, the, one of the downsides that I wasn't expecting, because they never tell you on the, you know, these sales videos, is the solitude, the time it takes, like, and the discipline it takes to get results. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the okay. I'm I'm if it, even if it's if it's now a day or you know it's it's the seclusion that lot you know and, and I'm about working in call centers and we have you know have a laugh with our mates and you know you've got that camaraderie and stuff but when you're working at home it's very different I, I don't know how you found that, that that's true mm. yeah it is a big transition for me um I had to really get comfortable with my boundaries because when you look on on uh, tv or when you watch youtube videos and you watch people who are successful running online businesses they mm. make it seem like you only have to spend a little bit of time doing it you can be kicking your feet up on the beach you can be <laughs> like like they they don't give you the impression that there's discipline required exactly. so you kind of think well I, I can just you know eat some ice cream and then afterwards just see what I get done and then um just you kind of think it's just chill you don't have to be mm. intentional you don't have to have much discipline true. and i just found that that that's not true yeah yeah Has, learned, hashtag hustle it's all about the hustle yeah i learned over time i learned over time to actually write down the tasks that i need to be doing and to hold myself accountable to the tasks that I need to be doing. So you kind of got to be a boss of yourself. You know? Exactly. exactly. Um, it's true. You, you have to be a boss of yourself. You have to treat your business like it's a job. And mm. over time, you will have more passive pockets, more com components where you can like take breaks and still not see a downfall. But yeah. that that's not the startup phase. Like that's what mm. I learned. You shouldn't yeah. be like, like that in the startup phase. Maybe a lot of the people that I was watching might be 10 years down the line already. And mm -hmm. they they can chill quite a bit because they have this Rolodex of connections and they have, um, you know, sales funnels set up that are bringing them customers um, on a consistent basis. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not yeah. talking about like software. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. When I say sales funnels, I'm not talking about software. I'm just talking about the process of having people that are constantly attracted to their businesses, yes. and they may have like some like word of mouth and things like that just happening, and it's somewhat automated at the point because they've put so much effort into it up front. Exactly. Like that's. It does get that way over time, but mm -hmm. in the beginning, it definitely doesn't start like that. It's true. I really liked that post that Kyle um, posted recently inside Wealthy Affiliate about how sometimes you've got to pedal uphill. And, and that's definitely in the beginning stage, right? You've got to pedal uphill. Definitely. Give it your own. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you can start, you can coast later, you know, like you can scale up, you can hire writers, you can, you know. I mean, you're still uh, controlling the handlebars and the direct, and you're still dictating the direction, but it's not that constant pedaling uphill. Yeah, yeah. I, I just love that analogy. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, so, can you just tell people like how where can we find you and you know where can where where can people follow you? Okay. Well. Um, you can definitely find me at hotentrepreneur.com. And so if you are looking for more community support training to help with growing your business, then that's definitely where I would say you can find me. Um, I just recently started this Enterprise Builder membership. I think I told you about it. Mm -hmm. And basically, we've been meeting live weekly and um, I've been making courses and things like that inside of there to help people to 
set up their inbound sales funnels, um, getting people attracted to them instead of having to go out and find customers like that. Because especially since the pandemic, um, a lot of people who were mostly focused on outbound sales have found it to be a challenge. <laughs> that's that's an understatement. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who, who saw so, that coming? Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of what we've been talking about is how to attract customers to you. Yes. Yeah, and how to convert sales without actually having to meet with people and yeah. So automation, mar- marketing automation, sales funnels, and setting up a website, things like that. Yeah. Mm. That's, yeah, it's amazing. You, you were telling me about you've got a, a great group going from different backgrounds too. Like it's not all just affiliate marketing. Is it? it might be same, yeah. you know, b- b- uh, business owners who just want to get their product out there, right? And, and want to learn yeah, how to use the online mostly, space. It's actually mo- like e-commerce because mm. the people have their own product or service um, for the enterprise builder membership, whereas like um, before I was mo- working mostly with people who were getting started in affiliate marketing through both the affiliate. And I still do that, but mm-hmm. um, with the enterprise builder membership, the people that are members there are having their, having a, either an idea that they want to turn into their own product or service, or they have their own product or service, but they want to learn how to do inbound sales. So right. that's, um, kind of a, where that is affiliate yeah. marketers i still think uh wealthy affiliate is a great place to go of course i have experience with it but i still think wealthy affiliate is a great place to go for that i would def- definitely agree okay well just i would just want to say thank you so much for being our first ever interview here at grow affiliate it's been such a <laughs> pleasure to have you <laughs> so i hope we can do this again yeah, thank you okay yeah Cool. That would be awesome. So um, I, what I'll do is I'll leave a link down below the video to, to the um, Enterprise, Bu- Enterprise Builders course. It'll be the makemoneyonlineblog.com forward slash EB. So I'll leave that link in the description. I highly recommend that you want to check that out. And yeah, if you like this content, give it a like and uh, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, we'll see you soon.